basically uh, what projects we're doing at the Open Knowledge Foundation. I will talk about the Open Data Incubator and the follow up program. Uh, it's like a Horizon 2020 funding program for uh, open data companies, startups, and SMEs. And the uh, new one is a data pitch uh, starting this summer, which will be. Starting this summer, which will be also open for uh, non open data companies. And I uh, will also go into what are the current uh, open data policies and the situation in Germany, because from our point of view, it's important uh, that you know about it, because the more open data you get, the more you can do with uh, data, which I hopefully will show you uh, the following examples. So, basically, this is the project from uh, which should have been presented today. Uh, unfortunately, could be presented. I can shortly uh, try to go uh, into their website. So the idea was uh, they had uh, using open data to make a zoning uh, for schools more intelligent. So you have a blank tool using open data. Where is the school? Uh, what's the distance? How many pupils are like the district? And uh, what's like the uh, demographic changes over the next? Uh, Time uh, periods uh, and they could present it because uh, that's a tragedy. Uh, one of the city uh, councils uh, is not ready to release data or uh, wants to have a PR presentation before uh, it gets officially announced. Uh, so uh, keep your eyes open for those who are enrolling that will be coming, I think, in the next weeks. I think it's a great project to see what you can do with open data, and it's done by Daniel Kirsch. Uh, from uh, Idelab, and uh, it's also founded uh, by uh, Odine and TSP Berlin, and uh, I think that's a different project. So I'm working at the Open Knowledge Foundation. My background is I used to be a system administrator, then I started economics, and then I was a part of a data startup uh, which brought me to Berlin, and this is Berlin again. Uh, open Knowledge is a worldwide uh, civil society organization. We are like a core continent, and basically, we're trying to uh, Bring open data, open knowledge uh, to everywhere. And we see open data as one of the funding parts that you have like an open government and also participation. And um, my point of view, you have normally this open data three columns, uh, which is funding of it. So you have like on the one side the government, you should bring your open government data. The other thing is you have the business sector using open data and sharing data, and then you need a civil society as a player to uh, foster the ideas. And uh, in Germany, we have right now the problem of this, like three layers where open data should be encouraged uh, from the top, the middle, and the bottom. We are, I think, pretty strong at the bottom. Uh, the middle is okay, but we are completely lacking the top. Uh, it's compared to other countries like UK or USA, it's not on uh, their agenda. So, what does open data normally mean? It's about open licenses or public domains. It should be open and uh, free to access uh, for everyone, and it should be machine readable. I'm pretty sure like uh, everyone from this crowd is more or less know why it should be machine readable or is there any questions regarding that I can skip through. Who doesn't know what open data is? Well, okay, let's skip it through. <laughs> so that, that why we want to have open data is like to have a more transparency, which is even in current uh, developments and I think in politics important uh, to make action accountable uh, to understand complex uh, issues and also to foster innovation. Uh, we are running in Germany code for uh, Germany, which is like a lab in uh, more than 30 places where uh, people meet on a regular basis and develop uh, apps or codes for the local libraries. And uh, one of these projects is uh, Rooftop.info, so basically develop a small sensor to measure the air quality, which on a Raspberry Pi I think it costs less than 50 bucks. And you can see, like, an, on a map where in Germany, uh, what the situation of the air quality is. Another one is like a citizen <laughs> building the town, where you can see uh, or get information on like construction issues. Uh, that's one project from uh, Thomas Busic. He's uh, one of the uh, code for building guys. Uh, we have a map on uh, how much uh, reconstruction work or investment for a local school would be necessary uh, in order that the school is like up to the the standard. Uh, this is some other projects we're doing, and the one is uh, I think the most important is a fact and start. It's like a freedom of information access portal uh, where you as a citizen can access uh, or require access to documents the uh, government is uh, or doing. Uh, the other ones are like uh, 20 
necessarily what just like SDP, sustainable development goals in the UN. And next one I will describe more in detail is that Fota and Open Data Incubator for you. And we have Blue Plus, where we basically try to uh, bring young kids uh, into programming in some kind of uh, a single background. Uh, so like last year, four events, or more than four events in four countries. Uh, another fun part we have since last year is uh, Transparenz Club. So basically, we have now a fund from 20,000 euros in order to uh, see the German government that you know, give up uh, some data or information. And so we see open data as infrastructure, which brings back uh, to a smart city from a bottom up and a possible facilitation from a like, program as a regular citizen. And in Berlin, we have one example is like uh, the three D model from the city of Berlin, and uh, I think that's from Potsdam from three D content, which is where you have like an API where you have three D model running on open data. Uh, since the web is already getting better, like from a work post from a local newspaper based on open data, how you can route to the nearest uh, lake, which will be get popular in the next few weeks. And uh, which brings me to one of our pet projects, is like uh, open data and uh, transportation. Uh, so this is a project where we try to uh, open up uh, local transportation data. And why we're doing this, the idea is behind it. So this was last week when I went, was on the way to the CBIT. This was uh, the information a Google map provided me. So the route was like 25 minutes, while uh, the real route was like uh, roughly the same second call. It was like uh, seven minutes. And the idea is you could have open data if you have every uh, local transportation system that you can say you're going from Berlin to Munich from one address to the other address, you see like uh, multiple uh, transportation uh, options. Uh, the moment that's not possible because the data itself is uh, on different sources, it's not the same standard. And from open data, what we had before, the few days, uh, once you open it up, once it's in a certain format, you can easily like uh, see it as a container, so you adapt it from one situation to another. So if you have it running up in one city, you just replace the flag or the, the name of the city, uh, all the data by itself is updated by itself, and so you can easily scale up uh, certain projects. So my job at the moment, or part of my job at the moment, is work for open data incubator. So we funded for uh, uh, 5.5 million uh, 57 projects in the European Union, uh, which are using open data or providing open data with up to 100k. Uh, for everybody who is into having a business, uh, datapitch.eu will be launching uh, this summer and we are trying to get them also into Berlin. Uh, so that basically means you get funding for doing data projects. Uh, I only can say this last one was uh, for every business a great uh, funding opportunity because it was really like lean uh, process of like four pages per application, uh, one forward and uh, like the project takes care of the bureaucratic paperwork. Everybody who has ever done like a U project knows how much pain the S is normally, uh, but this is you can uh, go on the link and ask the companies uh, seven out of Berlin uh, and all of them say it was like straightforward. This is some companies, this is one of uh, my CDT, they create like some artificial tree which is cleaning the air. Uh, and that's like the day of you will be using weather data, uh, climate data, also like city models of where to plant the trees and uh, measuring data flow through. Uh, that was a new data source launched uh, roughly three weeks ago, it's the center of 2D uh, from the ESA, from the European Space Agency, a new satellite. And, uh, that was the, I like that one because that was the launcher from the satellite rocket from the former Sentinel satellite. That was the rocket itself. Uh, and why it's important so when some people sometimes think about open data, they think like it's like some transparency image. But uh, if you see the third uh, world on it, it's about GPS. And GPS by itself is you could consider as open data. Uh, and you have like the whole logistic uh, industry depending on it. And uh, the reason why we have GPS in open data was roughly like 84 when like there was a passenger airplane was shot down in the all the Russian airspace. And they decided that they released the military data, the GPS coordinates, also for uh, sitting uh, aviation. And 
every smartphone now has a uh, pretty much technology that helps you go from A to B. One of the design boards is a Sentinel hub. I want you to check that out. Uh, whatever the new version is before it is it not true. So we should do this. Can we maybe find later again? Uh, that's one of the projects. So they give you a blade run for uh, getting the new satellite data from the ESA. Uh, Greenspin is a German uh, startup by the Agritech. Uh, they are using the data where you can see on the maps, for example, does your uh, farm need more watering? How is the crop doing? Uh, and you know, uh, there are plenty of uh, companies using satellite images, like environment systems, monitoring, what has that stuff. Uh, if you go to uh, the slides, all the links that are clickable with the Russian tool here, that's the European data portal if you want to find out cross national. Uh, data is in Europe and uh, I want to come back here uh, to this graphic so some data you will have as open data and the so-called data spectrum from the ODI where you basically can choose and like to what degree the data should be open uh, which brings in like you can have shared data uh, means you give some special access and uh, maybe a business out of it. In Austria you have uh, the open data portal where businesses are pushing in the data which I think is a good step forward because normally, uh, right now, most of the data provided is, uh, and that's not much, it's uh, by government. And you should, uh, as a business, consider the chance of having open data uh, to foster your innovation. I think in Germany, uh, the best case is right now uh, the German railway company, Deutsche Bahn. Uh, they are now experimenting in that area and having some great results where they get all the feedback from uh, different companies and also the community what they can do. Uh, one example is uh, the open railway map, which is like OSM, just like for rail infrastructure. And then next week, should we go to Germany on the policy stuff? Because that's important right now. We have uh, it's like incredible five different layers what's going on at the moment. So the one is OGP, then we have EIPI, Extractive Industries, German Transparency Law coming up, the Open Weather Data Law and the Open Data Law. So should this give them through? Uh, the Open Data Law on uh, Friday, there's a degree in the Parliament. Uh, there's some uh, current things we're not so happy about it, so not all uh, public uh, research data will be available. Uh, no, all public authorities have to provide the data. And uh, so there's a room for improvement. The good thing is once this gets installed, there's an agreement that it should trickle down to the uh, uh, federal level, state level, so to the Bundesland. Uh, we will see how that evolves. And the weather data is funny because we didn't have that on the radar that will be coming. And uh, behind it is uh, the Ministerium for Verkehrs and Innovation. Uh, that should go smoothly through, so you should be all happy to use open weather data in the next month, probably by the end of the year. Uh, the official cost for that law is uh, 3.5 million euro, uh, what they will use in uh, licenses fee. But uh, given how much stuff you can do, like that was said before, in the tech and tech sector, uh, should be given. Uh, then we have a uh, transparency register in Germany. I uh, right now discuss the question is how it will be, uh, why this is important. Because this is like, uh, if you remember from last year, uh, the Panama Papers uh, about uh, tax fraud, uh, one of uh, the tools how you can detect uh, tax evasion, which adds up to like, uh, according to the European Commission, from 50 to 70 billion a year. And uh, this data, if you would have like an open, uh, Registry, uh, like in the UK, they have uh, open corporates is using that in Germany. The company called Infisense, they're also sitting in Berlin, I think roughly around a mile from here, 1.2 kilometers, I guess, in that direction. So you would have an often as hundreds of cases. So you could look up what company is sitting where, who owns it, and makes it way easier doing business. Uh, another initiative is an uh, open government partnership. Uh, Germany joined uh, in December 2016 in Paris, that initiative. Uh, that's the time schedule. Uh, we are right now at the end of March, and there's uh, like uh, uh, more will be an announcement of uh, what the initiative should be for the uh, German government uh, for the first uh, 
suggestions for the initiatives. Uh, one is the NPI, that's extractive industries. And uh, I think Mark was there uh, last time in uh, Chemnitz. Uh, they had a project called Rosa uh, and for the uh, mining industry in Sachsen. So they digitized the uh, old mining data. And what they figured out is uh, what nobody knew supposedly before that in Germany you have like raw earth materials. And raw earth materials is like one of the need for high tech stuff. And before that, it was unknown and now that's important because you have a leverage against being independent from other countries who have like, uh, the majority of uh, the world resources. And I think it was equivalent of, uh, to mention that it will have triple digit a million uh, worth of it. And it should be coming out as open data as far as I remember. And they have, uh, if you go there, it's also like the open data portal that you can see. So there's some examples where I can see what the economic value of open data is uh, besides that you will have a social benefit and what I'm asking you today is that you should check out uh, Park and Start uh, using it uh, above your local uh, representatives either like your members of the Deutsche Bundestag or your Bitcoin uh, or party organization in order to make sure that you get the data. Uh, uh, stay in regular contact with them and uh, if you have a company, try to release the data that, that data you have. And that's so far my quick overview. I'm happy to join in. Uh, I think there's Knut from, uh, yeah, that's him. Developer from Code for Berlin. Um, Martin is here for Code Lab from uh, Potsdam. And I think uh, Mark is here if you have any questions for more geo data. I think it will open up the long uh, for discussion. Yes, thank you. Thank you.